Well guys, this seems like a regular occurrence starting our videos out by the dilapidated shed, but our freezer's in there and for freeze it February, I made the brilliant idea of deciding I was going to do something that involved using some stuff out of the freezer, but unfortunately it is buried at the bottom. So once again, we are out here in our fourth, fourth freezer, which uh, I said was going to be gone by January and we're now into February, but I want to be using eggplant and we put our eggplant away in this freezer after we harvested it this fall. So we need to find that. So here we go again, removing all the lamb. <laughs> that is a ridiculous amount of lamb meat. Unbelievably ridiculous. And that's just what's in the fourth freezer. So now that I removed like eight bags of lamb meat and bones, there is the eggplant, which is the part that I came out here for in the first place. Hi there, I'm Stephanie and welcome to Pantry Living. And today we are taking part in a collaboration called Freeze It February. Now, and this collaboration is put on by Lynn over at Bucket List Homestead. So thank you, Lynn, for organizing all this. It is so exciting and I am very, very excited to make a freezer meal for you guys. So what is Freeze It February? Well, basically for the month of February, a whole bunch of channels are coming together to create and produce content showing you some ideas for things you can put into the freezer for that meal for four people that sort of thing not humongous 38 meals in a day kind of thing just a simple i really want to tuck a meal away in the freezer today so without any further ado we're going to get into that today and we're going to be making eggplant curry so this recipe for this eggplant curry is very very simple to make there's actually not that many ingredients it is vegan it is great if you've got stuff from the garden that you're using up in the summertime for us as you know we are in the middle of a pantry challenge so we are limited to what we have on the property to make this so i actually had everything i think to make this and if i've made any tweaks to the recipe i will tell you and i will also include the recipe in the description below so that you can make it yourself. So let's go through some of the ingredients. So the main ingredient in this, of course, is eggplant. Now these don't look super pretty because they've been in the freezer since harvest time, but you need a pound and a quarter, roughly a medium sized eggplant. We choose to use ping tongue eggplants. You know, those long skinny type that you can slice in little circles. I love those ones, much preferred for me than the big bulby ones, but really it's up to your taste. So eggplant. Very important. Basically, you need one large red onion. I didn't have a large red, so we're kind of going with a medium and a small. Three cloves of garlic. Chris is gonna lose it on that because he loves a lot more garlic than that, but I'm sticking to the recipe. A carrot, you want roughly a cup of cut up carrots. And basically that's it for vegetables. The one thing I will say is you could take this recipe and you could add tofu, keeping it vegan, or if you want to add chicken or something like that. We do sometimes do that, but to be honest, this recipe is amazing just as it is with all the vegetables. The eggplant really, really gives you a lot of texture and body to the, the curry, and it really seems to work very well. Our whole family loves it, even meatless. So basically the rest of what you need is spices and tomatoes for your sauce. And you're going to see as we go through this, I'm using some stuff that was already open, things that I had, but I will kind of tell you exactly what you need. All right, so we have our vegetables cut up. And now it's time to get the wok going. I love to make this in a wok. You could do it in a frying pan or anything else too, but we're going to start with a bit of olive oil, drizzle it in the pan, get this hot, and then we're gonna fry up our onions, add in our uh, garlic and carrots, eggplant, and basically get our sauce going. So let's get busy smoking. Let's turn that down a little more. I'm really a good cook even though I'm smoking it out. One thing I'm gonna say as I get started here is I'm using already been frozen eggplant. So I have, gonna say this the right way, thawed it, not unthawed. I have thawed my eggplant. Now, if you were using fresh eggplant, you'd wanna cook it now. You'd wanna put it in with your onions and carrots so it has time to cook. But because it was thawed, frozen. Oh my goodness. Because it was frozen. Because it was frozen, it doesn't need very long in here because it's already quite soft. And I'll show you that when we add it in. But if you were doing it the other way with fresh, you'd probably want to put it in now when I throw these carrots in. It always looks so awkward when I'm doing garlic on camera. All right, so this recipe calls for one can of crushed tomatoes. So basically that's a 500 ml jar or a 14 ounce can. Now, 
I'm not going to be using that. I'm actually going to be using our tomato juice because I opened this one liter jar for a recipe the other day and it's been sitting in the fridge. So this is the perfect time to use this. But this also is an example of using what we have because we're in the pantry challenge and showing you that you can use a variety of different things, whether it's crushed tomatoes, tomato paste with a little bit of water added or tomato juice, all those sorts of things will work just fine for this recipe. But before I put the eggplant in, I just want to put a little bit of liquid into here so that nothing is sticking to the bottom of the pan. And then we're going to get our eggplant in here and really get going on all the lovely spices. There, it just gives it something to cook in. Wonderful. And here we go with our eggplant. Like I said, the eggplant really does make up the bulk of this recipe. So that is why it didn't seem like there was a lot of other vegetables in here. And now we're going to just let this cook off for probably about 10 minutes. We want that eggplant to get hot. And then we're going to put in the rest of our tomato juice and add all of our spices. So this has had a little time to simmer and kind of warm up. It's really absorbed all that uh, liquid that I put in there so far. So I'm going to put some more of the tomato juice in. Now the one thing I would say is I don't like to put it all in at once because I don't want it to be too runny at the end. So I'm going to put probably three quarters of this in and then hold back that last little bit to add at the end once I know I need it. The other thing we need to remember at this point is we will be adding coconut milk as well, which will also be a liquid, right? So for spices, three quarters of a teaspoon of curry powder, three quarters of a teaspoon of garam masala. I don't have my turmeric in a pretty dish, but we want one and a half teaspoons of turmeric, one and a half teaspoons of coriander, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And I know this really is to your personal taste. Uh, I probably will admit I would actually add a little bit more than that. So do what you do. And a half teaspoon of pepper. And that's all of our spices. So now we're just mixing it up. So I will be honest, I've made this tons of times. I already know I'm going to need this tomato juice in, so I'm just gonna put it in now and then it's done and it's heating up. But like I say, use your discretion when you're doing it. So basically that was the full 500 mils of the tomato juice. And basically the only other ingredient to add to this is your coconut milk and Basically, you want one of these cans, but today I'm not going to be using one of these cans because we often buy our coconut milk in bigger containers so that uh, it just seems to go further for us and this is a better value. And we do make a lot of curries in our house and use a lot of coconut milk. So I'm actually going to be using up what's left in this instead of a full jar. But I just wanted you to know that basically that 14 ounce jar is what you would need and you're going to pour that in and then you're just going to let this simmer for probably about 10 15 minutes and then you're going to put it in the freezer so we will let this simmer and we'll come back when we're ready just as one little tidbit i wanted to share because sometimes people don't think to look at ingredients on everything not all let me turn this so that you've got the right label not all coconut milk is created equal and definitely make sure that you flip it over and look at the ingredients in it when you purchase because Sometimes there's additives in there that you don't necessarily want or need. This one here, oops, let me find it here. I just looked at it. Wait <laughs> a moment. I just read it. Yeah, you can leave this in. That'll be fine. Do you need to look at it? Oh, it's right there. It's right at the bottom of the, the thingies. The only thing in this is water and coconut. That's it. And that's what we look for when we're purchasing these things because there are still a lot of items that we can't grow here on the homestead and this is one of them. So just a FYI, make sure you're watching what you're eating. So one thing I forgot to put into this was two teaspoons of sugar. So we're going to add that now. I'll be honest, I'm not really sure what it does. It's only two teaspoons, but I'm sure it affects the flavor a little bit. All right, so the moment has come for taste test, just in case anything else needs to be added before we just let this finish off. It's kind of hot. It's pretty good. It's actually quite good. Uh, the sugar actually made quite a difference. Now, the one thing for me, and I'm going to admit it right up front, I'm gonna add another half teaspoon of salt. So the recipe was three quarters of a teaspoon. 
I'm adding another half. It really is up to your taste buds on that. But I think that's going to make it perfect in my mind. So that is basically our meal that we are making for the Freeze It February collaboration. Once again, I'm going to mention this collaboration is hosted by Lynn over at Bucket List Homestead. So go check it out over on hers. She has a playlist, which I will link above. It's going to be over here uh, with everybody's videos as they come out throughout the month of February. Now, a very important detail that I forgot to mention is there's prizes. Did I say there's prizes? In order to qualify for the prizes, you need to comment on every video that you watch in the Freeze It February series, I guess you could call it. Throughout the month of February, Monday to Friday, definitely watch for those videos. Make sure you comment because the more you comment, the more you're entered to win. And Lynn will be drawing for those prizes on a live the beginning of March. So definitely pay attention and stay tuned for that. So the one thing I'm going to say is it really depends on how many people you're feeding how you put this in the freezer. I do not include my rice because, well, freezer space, as you know, is at a premium in our place and rice just takes up real estate. So I make my rice fresh when I cook this up. But if I'm just freezing meals for two for Chris and I, I use a 750 ml uh, yogurt container. I don't know, it's probably more than 750 ml, but it basically holds three cups because you gotta allow space for freezing. If it's going to be for all of us, the four, I use this little guy and it's funny, Chris and I were trying to find a thing on it that tells us how big it is. I'm going to say it's probably two liters, but obviously I only fill it to about there and then uh, that gives it space to expand as it freezes. So this is a great easy curry to make and throw into the freezer and it's even easier to thaw and cook. All you have to do is take it out, leave it on the counter for a little bit, put it in a pot, heat it up, do your rice, pour it on top. Mm, it's wonderful. It tastes as good as the day we made it. and. You can multiply this by however much you want. So if you want to make a big batch and put three or four meals away, it's a very simple, simple recipe to up or lessen, however it works for you. So we're going to get this into a container, get it in the freezer, and we'll be enjoying it probably a month from now, unless the pantry starts to run a little short.